What is going on guys? In today's video, we are gonna be going over the core fundamentals of web design using Figma. We're gonna to touch on everything from frame size to layout grids, typography, buttons, call to action, spacing and layout, visual hierarchy, and the story and connection that ties it all together. And whilst we learn all of these things, we're also gonna be creating a modern landing page website. Let's go. Okay, so first things first, we jump into Figma. Let's click on the frame tool, which is this one down here. And it'll come up with some options here in the sidebar. Now, the one that I normally use, MacBook Pro 14 inch. Now, you might specifically be asked to do it to a certain dimension. So 1440 is quite a common one. Some people will go with 1920. But at the end of the day, the right frame size is the one that is fit for the purpose of the website that you're working on. If we click on our frame, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here to layout guide. Now, if we click on that, it's gonna open this grid. We don't actually want a grid, so let's click here, and then we'll go columns, and we're gonna change the count to 12. Now we use 12 because 12 is divisible by two, three, and four. If you think of a website as a series of boxes, maybe you wanna have two boxes beside each other, maybe you wanna have three, maybe you wanna have four, maybe you wanna have six. It all works with a 12 column grid. And we use a grid just to keep everything neat and tidy. Going back to our grid, let's change the gutter to 16 and the margin to 80. You'll see throughout this tutorial that most of the sizes and numbers that we choose are divisions of eight. In some cases, four, but for the most part, eight. This could very much differ depending on what you're working for, but for this, that's what we're gonna choose. Next up, we're gonna focus on typography. When it comes to web design, typography is one of the most important things. It's often overlooked because it's just text, but the font that you choose for your website is gonna make a massive difference in the tone. These four fonts here are very popular as base fonts. Now, what is a base font? You can think of a base font as your body text. These are typically the most common. We've got inter, Geist, Poppins, Manrope. There's loads of them from Arial to Helvetica to, to whatever. The majority of websites and UIs coming out right now are actually using this Inter, but you can choose whatever you want. You'll see for each of them, we've applied minus four letter spacing. You can see that down here. Let's change this back to zero and you'll see how that looks. Letter spacing is, yep, you guessed it, it's the spacing between the letters and you can decrease it like this. Now, why do we do it for these fonts? It just generally looks better than the standard width that they have. This isn't something you have to do and it's definitely something you should be careful with because you can go overboard with, but if you're gonna choose one of these fonts, minus four letter spacing generally looks good, but of course you can adjust for taste. Now those are some popular base fonts, but here are some popular display fonts. Now you can think of these as if you've got a big headline on your website, what would that font be? Maybe it's something thicker and bolder and more eye-catching. Now you could have a big thick display font. These four are some typical common ones you see quite a lot paired with a base font from that previous screen. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're gonna be choosing Inter, but of course you can choose any font that you want. So let's go to our frame and we'll press T to get our text tool open and we'll click just into the center here. Now let's make this a headline. For sizing, we're gonna give this 64 pixels. For line height, we're gonna have this as auto and letter spacing, we've got that as minus four. Now we can click up here and just make that positioned in the center of our frame. Let's click on this and then we'll drag this down using shift and alt. And the size of this, we're gonna make 24 pixels and we're gonna keep the weight as semi bold, everything the same. Now that's gonna be a subheading. Let's hold alt and shift again, drag that down. Now this one, we're gonna make our body text. We'll change this to body text. And we're gonna change the size of this to 16. And we're gonna change the weight of that to medium. There we go, we've got three different font sizes. We can hold Shift and G to hide our grid. And let's select all of these and just position them in the center for now. Typography. We're just gonna use the one font for this whole website because a lot of the time that just works. Now let's talk buttons. Now buttons are obviously an important part for any website. It's generally the main call to action. The main purpose of a user probably involves clicking a button in some way. So we want them to look good, but they come in all different shapes and sizes. Up here, you can see we've got a rounded pill shaped button. Down here, we've got just a rectangle. Here, this is kind of a mix of the rounded, this is a rounded rectangle button, and sometimes you might find something like this, you hover over it and it 
changes the whole page and it jumps around. Now let's learn how to create one. So if we go to our frame, let's just click on our body text. We'll duplicate this out and let's call this button. Now, if we click on this, we can press shift and A to turn that into an auto layout. Now I'll explain exactly what that is and why auto layout is so useful when it comes to buttons. Now it's an auto layout with our button text contained within it. So if we click on the auto layout itself, you can see that we can now give it a fill and we'll give that a fill that is black. And then if we click on the button text itself, we can change that to white. Now we can resize the background of the button any way we want like this. And you can see up here in the alignment, you can position your text within that. But generally we probably want it to sit centered. And a lot of the time we want it to expand with whatever's inside it. So we're gonna make sure that width is set to hug contents and height is also set to hug contents. Let's make the size of our button text. Let's actually make that 20 pixels. And then on our auto layout, let's change the padding to the sides to 24 and then let's change the padding at the top to 16. Now the great thing about auto layout is because we selected hug contents up here, we can click on our text and we can change this. The size of the button changes dynamically. So let's change this to primary button. Then we'll click on that and then we'll duplicate this out and we'll change this one to secondary button. Let's give it a stroke. Let's make that black and then we'll take the fill off of it. Now, if we go to our text, let's make that black again. We have two different button styles. For designers starting out, spacing and layout can be one of the hardest things to master. Generally, if you're designing a hero, it might be one of these four layouts. So here we have a very centered aligned layout. So for something like a landing page for a product, some kind of SaaS landing page, could be something like this. You've got your main headline, your sub headline telling you what it's about, some kind of button, some kind of main call to action about what you want the user to do, and then maybe your product underneath like this. This is kind of hanging off the screen. This is kind of teasing the user to scroll down, but at the same time, you can see the main thing standing out is your primary call to action. Here we have pretty much the same, but you can see it's left aligned. Now this is really just for taste. Maybe you've got some kind of background image and that just works better for the text to sit like that. Down here we're left aligned, but you can see we've kind of brought this bottom piece up to the right. So we've contained a lot in the header here. Now, sometimes this can get a little bit busy, but a lot of the times it does a good job of connecting this main call to action to what the product is. And lastly, this one's a bit of a free for all, but you can see we've kind of got the headline at the bottom left and then buttons at the bottom right. And this can look quite cool too. There's no right or wrong specific layout that you should choose. It differs on each project that you're working on. For the purpose of this site, we're gonna be going with this basic centered align website. So let's start getting some structure into our website. Now, what do we want up here? We need a logo. I don't actually have a logo for this fictional project. So let's just call this optimize. Let's make this 28 pixels. And then let's bring our grid on and let's pull that up to the top there. If we hold alt, it'll bring up this sizing and I'm gonna position this just so it's 40 pixels from the top. And you can see because it's flush with our grid, it's 80 pixels from the left. Now I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna click frame selection and we'll go over here and we'll just call this logo. The next thing we need is a navigation. So let's choose our body text holding alt. We'll slide this up here and we'll make some navigation links. We'll press Command and D to duplicate that, slide that out, we'll go about. If we drag and select all of these, we can press Shift and A to turn these into an auto layout. Now this is good for navigation items. So let's say gap, let's make that 40. We'll go up here, we'll call this nav, and we'll click alignment, and we're gonna align that to the center of the page. We'll take our secondary button and we'll duplicate this over here. Let's change this to login. And then if we click on the text, let's change the size of this to 16. Let's click on the main auto layout. Now let's change this to 16, and let's change this to eight. No, nope, let's change that to 12, and we'll drag that up there. Now if we hold Alt, we'll duplicate this out. We'll change this to create account. Now, if we select both of them, we'll go shift and A to make that an auto layout. And the gap between them, let's change that to eight. 
position that so that's right there on the side holding alt you can see 40 from the top 80 from the right if we select all of these we'll go shift and a and make that an auto layout now we want to go down here to alignment if we do this here so if we double click it's going to position them equally spaced but what we want here is we want our navigation to sit in the center of the frame have our logo on the left and this on the right and we want it to be dynamic but what's happening right now is our logo is less width than these buttons over here if we go to our navigation buttons here let's just call these nav buttons you can see that the width of them is set to 224 now we can give our logo or the frame of our logo the same width so dragging this out we can make this 224 and in doing so that's going to make our navigation sit centered just how we want so in Figma, there's a few ways you can make shapes and define structure. So that could be using a frame like we've done. Frame is good because it can act like a rectangle or just a shape. You see, if we just give it a fill, we can make a rectangle just like that. The useful thing with a frame is if we add something inside of it, if that is positioned inside our frame, it means that we can use these alignment tools to align it inside it. It's also really good for clipping things. So let's just say we made this black and we increase the size of this. Now you can see it's cropping it outside of the frame and you can turn that off as well. So if you click on the frame, clip content, you can hide and show that. 99% of the time I'm using a frame, even if I'm making a circle, let's just say I want to make a square circle. So 80 pixels there, let's give this, let's give this a color. And if we go corner radius, we can just increase this all the way. Now, why use a frame instead of just the circle tool? So let's go to the circle tool and we'll see how they act differently. So we'll make them the same size. We'll make this eight pixels. We'll make it the same color. Let's drag this inside our frame. We'll make that white so we can see it. Now, if I want to position this into the center of this circle, I can do that because it's in a frame. I can go alignment, center and center, and it's going to position it. Using the circle tool, if I go align like that, it's only going to align this to the frame that that's in. An alternative way you could do this, so let's just take our text, make it black so you can see it. This is just our text here, but of course you can make that an auto layout. Now what you could do is you could give that a width of 80, a height of 80, and then that's going to act just like our frame. So you can make that there. Because it's not a layout, you've got it aligned to the center that will size dynamically like that. You're gonna use frame and auto layout a lot when it comes to structure. The spacing between elements is a big part of web design. So as we work on the hero, we'll kind of touch on that a little bit here and there. Next up, let's talk visual hierarchy. Here, we're gonna introduce these five colors into our web design that we have so far. For our background color, let's select our frame. You can obviously choose any colors you want, but I'm gonna choose this here. Now this is just a very subtle off-white. It's actually got a little bit of blue in it and it's almost pure white, but just slightly into the blue there. Now this gives it a slightly more neutral feel than just clean white. Let's select our logo and we're gonna give it this solid blue color which is this color here, if you wanted to copy that for yourself. These two colors of blue are our main accent color for the brand, where these are our sort of neutral palette, which we're gonna use on certain things. So let's select our navigation links. We're gonna give these the color of this here, which is just 66. That color there is gonna be the color for our body text, so we can select that too. Headline we're gonna choose this color here. So this is a dark color just like what we had, but it sits a little nicer because it's not pure black. For our primary button, we're gonna make it this gradient here. Now, if you wanna copy it exactly, it's just that there. Our subheading, we're actually just gonna get rid of right now because we don't really need it. We just want a headline, some body text. Let's go into our buttons here and then let's actually just give them a stroke of this. This is gonna be a little softer. We don't want them to stand out too much and we don't want them to take attention away from here. Now we've adjusted the colors a little bit. You can see the contrast of the website softened a little bit, which is nicer on the eye. One thing that's quite good to do is if you come to a website, squint your eyes a little bit to the point that you can barely see. And what do you still see when you squint your eyes? Generally, it should be your main button. If it's not that, then you might have too many attention grabbing elements. We want to keep it simple. We want to keep it clean. Now, finally, probably one of the most important things for any website is the story and connection of it all. 
So we're going to start making this website actually look like a website. I'm going to paste in this here for our main header. The website I'm making here is a staff management app. So let's actually make it look like one. For the main header, you can see I haven't mentioned anything about it being a staff management app. What I've done is I've talked about the solution that it offers. Someone coming to the website, they don't need just another staff management app. They want their workforce optimized perfectly. Our body text, let's go in here and then let's paste this in. We're going to reduce the width of this because we don't want it to be too long. We don't want the user to feel like they have to read. And sometimes when it's long, it makes it feel longer. Our all-in-one SaaS dashboard gives you real-time insights, performance tracking, intelligent scheduling tools to optimize. This here is offering you a solution. This here is telling you what the app actually is. So what do we want the user to actually do when they come to this website? Well, let's paste this in here. They can explore more features to try the app or they can just click this button to try it now this then this then this it works like a story now let's see if we can sell it even more what do people love they love knowing that the product that they're looking at isn't a scam so testimonials and social proof can be a great thing if you have them so let's drag in some testimonials i made and that is starting to look pretty good let's select all of these and we'll make this an auto layout and we'll make the gap between them 32 and we'll make sure that's positioned center on the page now we've got something like this it's looking pretty good you read this you can kind of get an idea about what solution it might offer but what is so important when it comes to these products is showing the product and the fact that this is already hanging off the page encourages the user to scroll if they don't already want to just try it out right now the five star rating testimonial thing we added up here is so good for building social proof but what else can we add we can add this here this could be a little marquee that just slides with these logos of companies that maybe use the product so if a company like Dell is going to trust in the product as a user when you come to the site you feel more at ease if it's good enough for Dell it's probably good enough for you one final touch we're going to do to really tie in with this dashboard is we're going to add something like this now what this does so well is this communicates with the dashboard down here and the header text it kind of ties it all together so if this is about optimizing a workforce then having something like this really simply just shows you what it actually does so new recruits hired 13 in july you can see that it's just drawing out stats what this thing does is it just gives management stats on their workforce and something like this it gives it a little bit of character it's visual and most of all it adds to the story and connection of all of it I know I skipped ahead quite a lot there adding these elements in. So if you were following along, not to worry, these are just frames that I've added. So this is just a normal frame with a 16 pixel corner radius. I've added a stroke of four pixels and I've given it a drop shadow and I've added this image inside it. This image is just from Unsplash and you can see it's just kind of cropped it like that. And within that, we just have these little call out things here, just these little bubbles that these could also be moved around like that. This here is just an auto layout using our body text. And each of these is just a logo that I've pulled from the internet. If you want to recreate these things, if you followed the tutorial up until now, you should have everything you need to be able to do so. And that is the end of part one. I'd love to see what you guys made with this. Send me a private message on X and I'll have a look at it and give feedback if you want. Here's some examples of the exact same website, just with some of the layout things changed a little bit here and there. So you can see the same website can look really different depending on how you do it. But hopefully this video was useful. If it was, please give this video a like, subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this and check back for part two where we'll build the rest of the website. Right, okay, see you in part two, bye.